Let's check out this uh, practice question about the rate law. So we can draw a rate law for an equation if we have some experimental data like this. So remember what a rate law looks like is that the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the first reactant raised to its order times the concentration of the second reactant raised to its order and if there was a third reactant raised to its order and so on and so on. So all rate laws look like this. And so in this case what we would do when we're trying to convert an actual reaction and look at an actual reaction and make it into a rate law we would have to fill in all of these variables. So th we don't have to worry about k which is a constant that's something we would compute later but we would have to fill in like what is A. In this case A is just A because we're talking about a generic reaction and whatever the reactant B is we're not concerned with the products in a rate law we're only concerned with the the species that are going to affect the rate. Um, we saw earlier that in very very rare cases product does affect the rate so sometimes in, in really weird circumstances a product can can come into the rate law but 99 percent of the time rate laws are only concerned with reactants because the rate of the reaction is only a function of uh, those reactants moving forward so um, when we are trying to fill in N and M A and B are easy we just look at the reaction and we say oh A is H2O and B is NH3 or something and we would just fill in those species directly but when I'm trying to fill in N and M I cannot just look at these coefficients so I'm tempted to put N equals 1 because there's 1 A and I'm tempted to put M equals 2 because there's 2 B but that's not how this works N and M do not equal the stoichiometric coefficient before A and B sometimes they do and that's a coincidence they are unrelated to the stoichiometric coefficient at the at the beginning not directly related so in order to determine what n and m are which would then give us the uh, the rate constant and if we or excuse me the rate law and if we knew what the rate law was then we could plug these numbers in and we could solve for k and we could know what the the rate constant is so in order to do that i have to get n and m so I solve for n and m by looking at the information in a table like this. I have to have at least three different trial runs, so, so I do three different experiments, and in those experiments several things have to happen. I'm monitoring the initial concentration and the rate of the reaction, and the rate is molar per second, so how the, how the concentration in molar changes every second. So um, if I I'm putting in a certain amount of A and a certain amount of B then I can measure the rate of that reaction and if I put in um, when I do the next reaction something important has to happen in the next reaction one of these has to be kept constant so either A is going to stay the same 0.3 and 0.3 between these two or B is going to stay the same 0.28 and this would be 0.28 so when I'm looking at two different experiments and I'm trying to determine N and M one of those reactants has to remain constant so if I look at experiment one that has these concentrations and I look at experiment two that has these concentrations then I can see that the only thing that's different between experiment one and experiment two is the amount of B because the amount of A is the same right so how much different is the amount of B well it looks like there's twice as much in experiment 1 I have 0.28 and in experiment 2 I have 0.56 so I have twice as much so between experiment 1 and 2 I just doubled the concentration of B and then I measured the rate in both cases and what happened well when I have 0.28 molar B the rate is 0.02 molar per second and when I double it and I leave A the same but I double B 0.56 the rate is still 0 0.02 molar per second. So changing B did not change the rate. So how do I express that mathematically? Well, th we learned about a kind of reaction that's called a zero order reaction. And in a zero order reaction, the rate is not a function of the concentration. 
So that's kind of what we're seeing here is that um, we're doubling the concentration and yet the rate doesn't change. So we could remember that when I change the concentration and it doesn't affect the rate, we could maybe remember that that's a zero order reaction. Um, or we would, if we're trying to express this mathematically, what that means is that I have the concentration of B, let's just call it 2, for oh, let's, we can put in the real numbers here. The rate equals K, and then I'm putting in B, which is going to be 0 0.280 to something, and what does it equal? The rate is 0 0.02. And then, if I double it, point, come on, 5, 6, to the n, I guess this would be to the m, equals 0 0.02. So what that means is that um, whatever I'm multiplying m to, then it must So what that means that then is if both of these are true, and, we're, and by the way, we're just ignoring A for now. I'm just going to focus on the B because the B is the only thing that changed. So if I'm just looking at this half of the rate law, and I put in the concentration for B, and I doubled it, but the rate doesn't change, the only way to make this mathematically true is to make M equal to 0. Because if M is equal to 0, then what is a number to the zero power that's equal to one, right? If I multi if I take a number to the zero power with an exponent of zero, then that's equal to one. So then this becomes k times one equals zero point zero two, and this becomes k times one equals zero point zero two. So then k equals 0 0.02 on both of these. So um, when there's two ways to look at this. When I'm trying to solve what, for the, what the rate law is, there's three possibilities. The order could be 0, which means that the rate is not affected by the concentration. I double the concentration, the rate stays the same. That's a 0 order. Or the rate is affected um, linearly, which means that it, when I double the concentration of a reactant, then I double the rate. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, or, if I double the concentration of a reactant, the rate could quadruple. So it might be um, an exponential relationship, which is a second-order reaction. So it's either zero order and it's not affected by concentration, it's first order and it's a one-to-one, -one, double the concentration, double the rate, or it's a second order and it's a one-to-two, where I double the concentration and I quadruple the rate. So those are really the only three possibilities when I'm trying to analyze how the rate changes as a function of changing concentration. So when I look at this, I can say right here, doubling the concentration leads to the same rate, then I know that little m is equal to zero. That's what that tells me right there. Now I have to solve for n. So now I need to look for two experiments where a is changing, because now I want to figure out how does, how does changing the concentration of a change the reaction. But in those two experiments that I'm looking for where a is changing, B has to stay the same. And so that's what we saw here, right? A stayed the same, but B doubled. If A is changing and B is changing, so for example, let's look at experiment 2 and experiment 3. In experiment 2 and 3, the concentration of A is changing. Between experiment 2 and 3, the concentration of B is changing. If I performed both of these experiments only, 
and I was trying to compare their rates to each other, and I would say, ah, when I doubled this one and I cut this one in half, then the, the rate quadrupled. Then what does that mean? Well, there's lots of ways mathematically that that could work out. And so by changing both concentrations at the same time, I don't know which reactant affected the rate in which way. But if I hold A constant, then I know that if there was a change in the rate, it must have been caused by a change in B because B was the only thing that changed. And uh, further, and similarly, if I have uh, changing A and I double A, look at uh, experiments one and three, in experiment one and three, I double the amount of A, but I keep the amount of, a of B constant, 0.28 in both. So between experiments one and three, the amount of B is not changing. So if the rate changes between experiment one and three, it has nothing to do with B. This change in rate is only a change that was affected by the doubling of the concentration of A. So then I would look at this experiment. I'm going to try to only isolate these two. I would look at these two experiments. There we go. And compare the numbers on these two experiments if I wanted to know how does changing the concentration of A change the rate. So here, when I double A, 0.3 to 0.6, then the rate goes up by a factor of four. It goes two, four, six, eight, right? It goes, it quadruples. So what we can see then is if the concentration of A was increased by a factor of two, and the rate was increased by a factor of four, then this is actually a second order reaction in A. So the value of M when I change the concentration of B, how does that change the rate? It doesn't, so M equals zero. And the order of A, when I change the concentration of A, how does that change the rate? Well, doubling the concentration of A quadruples the rate, so then N must equal, must equal two. It's a second order reaction. So we can just look at these numbers and see how changing the concentration changes the rate to determine if this is a 0, a 1, or a 2. Those are usually the only possibilities. Now sometimes in rare cases we can get negative numbers and sometimes we can even get fractions. Sometimes these are fractions. But in 90% of the cases the order of a reactant is either 0, it's a 0 order reaction, it's a first order reaction, or it's a second order reaction. 0 or 1 or 2. So um, there is a, we can look at this and figure that out um, if you're good at looking at the numbers and if that makes intuitive sense to you and you can say I doubled this and quadrupled this. But there's a mathematical way to figure this out too if, you can, if it's harder for you to just look at those numbers and kind of see how changing the concentration changes the rate. So to mathematically figure out what N and M are, we have this equation. So if we, it's supposed to be a two. If we have two concentrations for A, and I have two rates for A, and that's what I have here, concentration and rate. So if I have a table like this, then I can use this equation to solve for N. If it's, if you, if it's hard for you to look at this and see whether or not this is a, a, a 1 to 0 ratio, or a 1 to 1 ratio, or a 1 to 2 ratio. So here's a way that you can just run through these steps and do this mathematically. So let's plug the numbers in. Um, A1 is 0 0.3 molar. 2 is 0 0.6 molar raised to the n power. And the rate is 0 0.3 
0 to molar per second divided by 0 0.08 molar per second. So um, this becomes 1 over 2, right? So 1 half. So 0.3 divided by 0 0.6 is 0 0.5. And 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.8 is 1 fourth, so 0 0.25. And the units cancel, right? Change right here. So molar and molar cancel, so this is just a unitless number. And molar per second and molar per second cancel, so this is just a unitless number, 1 fourth. So now we have to solve for n. So we'll just use uh, a logarithm here. So if we take the log of both sides, then we get n times log 0 0.5 equals log 0. 0.25 or n equals log 0.25 over log 0 So n equals 2. So we can use the property of logarithms and this information from the table to solve an equation like this. And given two concentrations and two rates, I can solve for the order of reactant. Um, uh, I think it's more intuitive to just look at how the, the concentration changes. So here the concentration was doubled. And then look at how the rate changes. The rate here was quadrupled. So if I double this and I quadruple this, then the answer is 2. If I double this and I double this, then the answer is 1. If I double this and this doesn't change, then the answer is 0. 90% of the time, that will get you your answer. All right, now let's solve the problem. We know that the rate law equals k times a to the 2 times b and m equals 0. So now we've solved for n and m. So b times 0 equals 1. So the rate, our rate law for this problem is k times a squared. Now to solve for k, let's move this up here rate equals k times a squared we need to plug in a and the rate so we can choose any of these trials we could choose one or two or three it doesn't matter because I have a rate in each of them and I have a concentration of a in each of them so we'll just choose a the rate is 0, 0.0 to zero zero molar per second. Concentration of A is zero point three zero zero molar squared. So now we just solve for K. So 0.3 molar squared is 0 0.09 molar squared. And then we will bring this, oops, 0, 2, 0, 0 molar per second. 
will divide both sides by 0 0.09 molar squared. And then we can solve for k. Bring this up here. k equals 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.09. So k equals 0 0.22222. And what are the units? Let's do some dimensional analysis here. So I have meters on in the numerator, or excuse me, molar in the numerator and molar in the denominator, but I have molar squared in the denominator, so I have two down here. So let's remind ourselves what molar squared is. Remember when I square something, that's just multiplying it by itself. So molar squared equals mole times molar times molar, right? I have two molar, multiply them by each other. So when I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen with the units, remember that there's two down there. One, this molar on top will cancel one of these molars on the bottom, but then I still have molar on the bottom because this was molar squared. So one of those capital M units will remain. And then this uh, per second on the top, remember that this is actually part of the denominator because this is molar per second. So this S, even though it looks like it's sitting in the numerator, because there's a slash over it, it's actually this S is in the denominator. So what does that mean? That means my units look like this, this over here. There are no units in the numerator because there was only one M in there in the beginning and I canceled it and the S is actually down here. So the units have one molar in the denominator, capital M, and one second. So the unit is per molar per second is how we would say that. There's nothing in the numerator. So the rate constant is 0.2222 per molar per second. Oops. Let's look at sig figs. We have three sig figs in each case, so then this is 0 0.222, three sig figs. And my units are one over molar over second. So this one, oops, one over m times s, that's what I have, is the same as saying m to the minus one, s to the minus one. Because remember this minus one is implying that this is in the denominator. So these are equal to each other. So 1 over m times s equals m to the negative 1 times s to the negative 1. So that's what I have here. That's my, those are my units.